Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, Father, for this time of allowing us to just worship you and thank you and, and glorify you this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of being able to be in your presence once again. Now, Father, we pray that as we go into your word, that you would illuminate the text. Help us to understand what your word is saying to us. For, Father, we desire to be more like your son, Jesus, and to do what you have called us to do. Now, Father, I pray that you will speak to me and through me. Let your people not hear me, but you who dwell within me. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may sit, please. So as I said, we're starting this new sermon series, which is entitled, This is What We Do. And part number one is, we are generous. That's what we do. We are generous. We're taking time out this month to remember the importance of being generous. When a person is, is generous, they are liberal in their giving. They live a life of a, with a mindset of saying, I am going to give and I am going to help those who I can. They hold on to the things of this world lightly while holding on to God tightly. Many people would say that they're generous, but the truth of the matter is most Americans are not generous. If you were to look at the concept of tithing, the concept of, of giving 10%, not even to a local church, just 10% to any type of organization, charitable organization at all, some stats say that the average American gives only 2.8% of their income to charity. A sad reality is the more money you make, the less you give. If you make over $100,000, the giving goes down to 2.6% of their income to charity. Why is that? The reason is, one, is because people are selfish. And people think about themselves. They want to make sure that they have everything they need and everything they want. Secondly, they feel as if they give, they can't live the way they want to live. That if I go and give something here, then that's going to stop me from getting my fifth cup of coffee today. Right? That, that the third one would be that if they live, they also live above their means. And they're strapped with debt. And they have bills all over the place. They are bogged down with credit card bills and everything else. So therefore, they are not able to give. But I believe that should not be said of Christians. I believe Christians should be generous. I believe we should be generous because our God is generous. He is generous with his grace. He is generous with his mercy. He is generous with salvation, that he gives salvation to anyone who believes in son's death, burial, and resurrection. He is generous. I like to say it like this, that growing Christians are growing in generosity. Growing Christians are growing in generosity. That as you grow in your faith, the more you get to know God, the, the more you pray, the more you study the Bible, the more you grow, the more you should have a willingness and a practice in giving. Where being generous is, becomes a priority in your life. That you begin to give on a regular basis because you know how God has been generous towards you. And our generosity should begin with us giving tithes and offering to the church. And I know somebody just said, I would have to come to church on this Sunday. And they're talking about tithes and offering. Well, just stay with me for a while because I believe the word of God has something to say to us. Now, the tithe is 10% is of our income being given back to God as an act of worship and as an act of gratitude for blessing us and for doing so much for us. Now, some people don't like to talk about tithe and offering and money in church. Some people believe that the church are always asking for money. Some folks say, you know what, I don't want to hear about money in church because the pastor just wants all of our money. The truth of the matter is, our main objective is for people to get saved. The, the truth of the matter is, our main objective is that people would grow in their faith. The church's main objective is not money. 
It is salvation and sanctification to where people will get to know Jesus and then they will grow to be more like Jesus. That's the objective. And here at Mount Calvary, we preach and teach on generosity. We preach and teach on giving. We preach and teach on money. Why? Because the Bible teaches on money. The Bible teaches on tithes and offerings. The Bible teaches on sacrificial giving. The Bible teaches on stewardship. And since we want to be faithful to the Bible, we teach what the Bible says. And we refuse to rob of the blessing of obeying God. We refuse to say, you know what, we're not going to teach on this because people don't like to hear about this. No, we're going to teach on this. Why? Because we want you to be obedient to the commands of God. Some people don't want to hear about tithes because they believe it's only for the Old Testament saints. You know, that was in the Old Testament. That was just for those Jews. But when you begin to search the scriptures, when you begin to search the Bible, you begin to see people who are tithing before the Mosaic law came into existence. When you begin to look at the book of Genesis, you see how Abraham and Jacob tithed way before the law came into existence. Abraham tithed in Genesis 14 and 20, and Jacob tithed in Genesis 28 and 22. And if we was to turn over to the New Testament, looking at the Gospels, looking at Jesus, our Savior, We find Jesus affirming the concept of tithing in Matthew 23 and 23 and Luke 11 and 42. Therefore, we cannot say that tithing is only under the law. But I want you to understand that tithing is a way for you to honor God. Tithing is a way for you to worship God with the resources that he has given you. Tithing is a way to show our gratitude to God. To say, God, we thank you because you have been so gracious toward us. Thank you because you have blessed us. Thank you because you have given us a job. Thank you because you have given us a retirement check. Thank you because you've given us SSI. You know we crazy. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Lord, thank you for being there for us. So therefore, we give back to you. Tithing also gives us a a baseline, a a basis of how much we should give. Not because we're trying to be legalistic, not because we're trying to follow some type of rules, but because we're trying to be and learn how to be generous like our generous God. And to help us see how we can be a generous community of believers, a generous group of people here at this local church, We turn our attention to the book of Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy is the book that Moses penned when uh, the children of Israel was about to go and settle in the promised land of Canaan. Uh, The adult generation that came out of Egypt, uh, came out of bondage, that adult generation died in the wilderness. And now that their children have become of age, they have grown up, the second generation now is about to go into the promised land to conquer the land of Canaan. But before they go and acquire the land, Moses reminds them of the command that God gave to the Israelites right when they came out of bondage. So that that they would know how to live once they got into the promised land of God. He wanted them to know how to live as a settled and established nation and not as a nomadic people. And and he begins to teach them, and he taught them in chapters 12 through 26 about how to live and how to remember the commandments of God. And in the beginning of that portion of that chapters, in chapters 12 through 14, Moses begins to talk about public worship. In those three chapters, Moses tells them how God wants them to have one central place of worship. He wanted them to have the tabernacle where they can come together as a group to worship God. He wanted them to be aware and to stay away from false gods and not to worship like the Canaanites who were already in the land. He told them how they were supposed to eat while they were in the land to distinguish them from the people who were already there. And then he begins to talk to them about how they need to be a people of generosity through giving tithes. The teaching on generosity and the teaching on tithing is found in verses 22 through 29 of chapter 14. 
Within these verses, I believe we'll be able to find some, some principles that will help us begin to understand how to be a generous people here at Mount Calvary. In verse 22, it says, you should truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. Now, understand now that they were in a farming uh, culture to where their economy was built on agriculture. And so every year that they had a harvest, they were to come and bring a tenth of all of their harvest to the Lord. There was a tithe annually to God. Today, most of us don't have an annual harvest. Most of us have a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly harvest. We call it a paycheck, right? Or some type of check that comes to you, your retirement check. And, 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 and every time that increase comes, we should take 10% of that and give it back to the Lord. As a way of saying, God, thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for how you already kept me. Thank you for already blessing me, God. Thank you for what you've already done in my life. And we're to give it back to God in the local church. Why do I say the local church? Because we can see in verse 23, it says that in the place where he, which is God, chose to make his name abide. Now, for the Israelites, that was the tabernacle at this time. Eventually, it would be the temple. But right now, it's the tabernacle. He says, well, you need to come and bring the tithe to the place where God has placed his name. And right now, in the scripture, that is the tabernacle. But for us, it would be the place where the community of believers come to worship. For us, we, as the community of believers assembled to worship, we are the sanctuary of God, not this building. Everyone who believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are the church. And we come together in this building that God has provided for us so that we can worship him. So what we do with our tithes, we come together and in this place where God has blessed us to be able to worship him as the church, we give our tithes and our offering. And it's interesting because verse 23, it also says, it says something very interesting. At the end, he says, he says that you may learn to fear the Lord God always. Fear to, to, to reverence, to, to honor, to to, to respect. Tithing teaches us how to honor God. It teaches us how to honor God, not with our resources, but with his resources. How to, how to respect him and how we use his resources he has given us by the way we spend and use it. It should be used as a way to give him glory. Because the truth of the matter is everything we have belongs to him. I know you went into your closet and got your clothes, but it's really his closet and his clothes. Amen. You know how you tell your kids, right? You tell your kids, they're like, close my door. No, sorry, that's my door, right? That's not your door. That, that's my door. Them clothes you got, I bought them, so they're my clothes. I'm letting you use them, right? That's what God says to us. No, 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 that's not your car. It's God's car. No, 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 that's not your house. That's your apartment. That's God's house. That's God's apartment. Everything we have belongs to him. And so, therefore, the way we use it should be used in a way that honors God. Listen, if you want to learn how to be generous, if you want to learn how to be generous like our God who is generous, begin tithing. If you want to learn how to be a good steward over the things God has given you, begin to tithe. If you want to learn how to trust God, begin to consistently tithe to God. Tithing requires you to trust God. It requires you to, to, to honor God with what you have and to not trust yourself or your bank account, but to trust God. You will learn by experience how God can do more with 90% and his blessing upon it than you can do with 100% without the blessing of God on it. You will learn by experience That God will be able to bless that 90% and do way more than you ever could do with 100% without him doing nothing for you. You learn by experience. And so now when the people of Canaan, they would move into the land of the, uh, now when the Israelites move into the land of Canaan, 
right? Because they came out of a, the wilderness, they would get into the land of Canaan, they would begin to spread out. And so, so God made a, a, a provision for them. He, he made a provision for them once they move into the land of Canaan that was not in the original Old Testament commandment when he first gave them the law. It's found in verses 24 through 26. The provision is that there, whoever would have to travel a long way to go to the tabernacle to give their tithes, instead of them having to take a ton of grain or, or a ton of livestock, what they would have to do, he says, listen, if, if it's too far for you, go ahead and sell your grain in the city where you are. He says, go ahead and, and sell the, the livestock in the city where you are. He says, sell it and take the money and travel with the money. Travel light. He says, when you then get to the tabernacle, go ahead and purchase some grain there. And go ahead and purchase some livestock there. As a matter of fact, purchase whatever you want right there and offer that as an offering or a tithe to God. God made it easy for them to obey. God made it easy for them to, to be generous. Just like us here at Mount Calvary, we want to make it easy for you to obey. We are consistently thinking of ways, of new ways to make it easier for you to give your tithes and your offering. Why? Because we want you to honor God. We want you to obey God. So when you go out of town or if you're sick or you have to work, you still should be able to obey God. You still should be able to be a good steward over God's resources. So we give you at least three ways. I'm going to give you three ways. One is doing Sunday morning worship. And the second is that there's a, a, a box, a, a tithe box right outside in the foyer. And then thirdly, there's the church website where you can go ahead and give your tithes right on the church website. Why do we do that? Because we want to make it easy for you to obey God. We want to make it easy for you to honor God with your resources. And at the end of verse 26, it says something interesting. It says, you shall rejoice, you and your household. Well, which lets me know. It lets me know this. It lets me know that, that, that tithing and being generous should be a time of rejoicing. Amen. It should be a time of, of celebration and not a time of, here we go again. I thought I came after offering. I thought I came after tithes and offering. No, no, no. It should be a time where you say, God, thank you for allowing me to give. Thank you for allowing me to tithe. Thank you for allowing me to give what I have back to you. Thank you, God. That's what it should be. So I'm going to encourage us now that every time tithes and offering come up, we need to start clapping, right? We need to celebrate God. Matter of fact, I want to start seeing some folks run around the church like, I get to give Jesus. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. You're so good. I want to see somebody running around here like, wait, give me the plate here. It should be a celebration. We should be saying, God, thank you. You have kept me all week. God, thank you. You bless me with a job. Thank you. You bless me with a check. Thank you, God. Thank you. Here is my offering and my tithe to you. Thank you. It should be enjoyable. Not frowning. Not frustrated. My God, Jesus, I gotta give this. I gotta, I gotta give this man. You ain't giving me nothing. I gotta give this man some money. No, 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 no. You're giving it to Jesus, and He will do the rest. Jesus, take care of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we should be a celebration. We should be celebrating God, having a good time. If you ain't praising at no time, you should be praising during tithes and offering time. Because you get the privilege to give. It's a privilege to say thank you. It's a privilege to say, God, I appreciate what you've done for me. He says, he says listen, he says, you and your house. You and your household, y'all should rejoice. Which tells me that, that you should be also teaching your kids the joy of giving. The joy 
of giving to God, the joy of tithing. You should teach them that, listen, you got a dollar, you need to take 10 cents and give it to God to say thank you as an act of worship. As an act of celebration for what he has already done. To say, you know what? I thank you because you know what, son? You know what, daughter? This is what we do. This is what we do as Christians. This is what we do as followers of Christ. We are generous with our resources that God has given us. Chapter 14, it ends with a command to be generous towards others. In verses 28 and 29, it says, says, listen to what it says. says, At the end of every third year, at the end of every third year, they were supposed to get another tithe. And this tithe was supposed to stay in the city where the tither was from. And the tithe was there to to help the marginalized within the community, to to, to help those who were in need and to help those who, who didn't have land. And these would be widows, these would be orphans, the the fatherless. These would be foreigners who came in, strangers. And then also the Levites. That that, that a portion of their generosity would go to help those who are in need. And those who did not know Israel's God, the foreigner. We do the same thing here at Mount Calvary. A portion of the tithes and offerings that come in to Mount Calvary, it goes out to help those physically and spiritually. Physically is through our benevolence fund. When someone needs help with something, we say, how can we help you? And I send them over to the deacons because I don't handle no money. Go see the deacons. Praise Jesus. Yes. And then next is to the food pantry that if you need food, we have a pantry where we try to help so that people don't go hungry. And then spiritually, through our outreach activities, our VBS and our sports camp and our Harvest Fest and our Operation Christmas Child. Do you know through our outreach activities this summer, right, VBS, sports camp and Harvest Fest, we have served over 225 people? Amen. We have served and blessed them, and six folks got saved. Come on. Six folks got saved as a result of you being generous. Come on. Listen, we don't teach about tithing to get more money. We teach tithing so that we can honor God. We teach tithing so that we can serve and help more people so that we can show the love of Christ in tangible ways so that more people can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, so more folks can get saved. More folks can escape the damnation of hellfire and brimstone. That's why we teach tithing. So so the Lord ends the the command of tithing with some motivation. Everybody needs a little bit of motivation, right? He he says at the end of of verse 29 about when you're being generous with your tithes on a regular basis. Listen to what he says. He says, the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. He says, he says that God will bless your work when you are faithful in giving your tithes to God he will bless your work to where not only will you be more productive you will have a bigger harvest so the more you're faithful the more God blesses the more you're generous the more God blesses your productivity and your resources so what you can be more generous why would God trust you with a thousand dollars if he can't trust you with a hundred dollars You're faithful with a little, he'll allow you to be faithful over much. So I am going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to take God at his word. To to do what he has commanded all of us to do, which is to be generous with his resources. I'm challenging you to take the six-month tithe challenge. 
You, you, you see it on the announcement scroll every, every Sunday. The tithe challenge. Six months. I, I mean, I want to challenge you to trust God in your resources, what he has given you for six months, and see what he will do. Amen. This is the only place that God tells us to try him, to test him, to see what he's going to do, and it's in the area of our finances. Any other time, God is like, don't you test me. Don't you mess with me. But in the area of giving, of tithes, offering, generosity, stewardship, he says, put me to the test and see what I'll do. See if I'll be faithful to my word. And I'm going to tell you, God can't do two things. He can't lie and he can't die. So he ain't going to lie. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Now understand now, I'm not saying God going to give you a million dollars. But I am saying, if he say he's going to bless, he's going to bless. If he say he's going to do what he's going to do, he's going to do it. So take the six-month tithe challenge and test God. And see Will he not sustain you? And you can do more with 90 than you can do with 100 without his blessing. And besides, we need to be generous because our God is generous. Besides all of that, besides the challenge, you need to be generous because God is generous. He has given you resources. He has given you somewhere to stay. He has given you his grace, his mercy, his salvation. It's not your salvation. It's his salvation. And he has been gracious to us. So we should be gracious and generous with what he has given us. And understand this offering for salvation is not just for those who are already saved. It is for everyone in the world. That everyone can be saved. Everyone can receive God's generous gift of salvation. To where you can spend eternity with God. And not spend eternity away from God. And all you have to do is repent of your sin. Believe the gospel. That Jesus shed his blood for you, died for you, was buried and came back to life three days later. And make Jesus the Lord of your life. And salvation, that free gift, that generous gift can be yours today. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I just ask you to say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you sent Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Now, Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that we would take you at your word. Father, I pray that we would take the tithe challenge if we're not already tithing. And Father, I pray that you pour out a blessing that there would not be room enough to contain. I thank you for what you're going to do. And I give you glory and honor in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.